Hi everybody, it's Dr. Brace here. Welcome to Facial Plastics Friday. I'm taking inspiration for this week's uh, post, this week's video from Dr. Nyack in St. Louis. He's a master teacher and great has great use of props in his story, so we have a prop today. It's week three of our rhinoplasty series and I'm gonna be talking about the nasal bump. One of the most common things I get asked in a rhinoplasty consult or one of the most common requests is, can you take my bump down? A lot of people have a bump here on their nose, on their profile that they want to be reduced. In older literature, this is called a dorsal hump. I like to call it a, a dorsal convexity where the skin is raised up, light hits it, and makes the nose look larger. It takes away from the dorsal aesthetic lines because the nose has a higher starting point in the middle. And for most people, it throws off the aesthetic balance of their face is a distraction that they would like to have a smooth, straight uh, profile so that people don't see their bump as the most prominent feature on their face. And so to understand what a bump is, you have to understand some nasal anatomy. Um, it's not just a simple, oh yeah, we could do that in the office and get rid of it. Uh, it is, to surgically address it, it is a surgery. There are different techniques and this uh, science is always improving. There's dorsal preservation techniques to reduce a bump and you have to be the right candidate for that. Um, I mentioned a few weeks ago on the accounts I recommended following, Dr. Sam Most is an expert at this in California and you can check his results out for what a dorsal preservation um, procedure would look like. But for me, for most patients, what we're doing is we're actually surgically removing the bump. A little aside, if you ever are considering a non-surgical rhinoplasty or a liquid rhinoplasty to hide a bump, what you're doing here, I'm gonna use my prop, is you are camouflaging it. So this skeleton here I've shown the nasal bones, the upper lateral cartilages, and then the tip cartilage, cartilage, or the alar cartilage, or the lower lateral cartilage, it has multiple names. A bump is made up of the bone, the septum underneath the upper lateral cartilages, and the upper lateral cartilages themselves, in most people. There are rare cases where there are uh, cysts or scar tissue from previous surgery uh, that can form a bump, but for most cosmetic patients, we're talking about this tissue here is larger than you would like. A liquid rhinoplasty is where you put filler in the depression above the bump to make the bump look less visible, to uh, camouflage it. That necessarily makes your nose larger. It makes this part of your nose bigger in order to hide this. So in some people, it makes it look like your nose is very long or it starts kind of at your eyebrows. So it's not always the right thing um, or the best thing for people to do. It also has some rare but serious uh, consequences if the filler goes into a blood vessel and travels behind the eye there are some case reports of blindness so that's why it's one of those things that uh, are done with care and with careful consideration so let's get into some nasal anatomy I already mentioned the nasal bones I'm gonna turn this around here the nasal bones make up the upper third of the nose underneath in the middle third we have the upper lateral cartilages and they form the mid vault of the nose and so those are those guys swinging in the middle Underneath the upper lateral cartilages, I'm gonna remove them here, is the nasal septum, and it's what separates your nose to the left and right. And these are what make your tip, a bulbous tip, a wide tip, the lower lateral cartilages. So in the middle is your nasal septum. It is what separates left and right sides of your nose. So if you have a septal deviation, it means that this is twisted one way or the other and it's blocking your nasal airway. For most people, when we're doing a bump reduction, this is what we're really talking about. I would do this in most people if it's just a bump as a closed rhinoplasty. If we're doing tip work, I would open up the nose. But essentially what we have to do is we have to shave the cartilage. We have to shave the cartilage of the upper lateral cartilages as well. And we have to shave the bone down. There are different ways to do this. The most common and the classic way is with rasps and osteotomes. A rasp is essentially a big file and it is good for filing down the bone. An osteotome is a bone cutting instrument, and so we often have to use an osteotome to take down a big bump because rasping it is a lot of trauma to the skin to go back and forth multiple times. So an osteotome can take a bump down, you know, 80, 90%, a rasp can finish it off gently. And then the cartilage portion here gets cut with a, with a scalpel, with a sharp excision. And so bump removal is done in the operating room. For me, in my practice, people are asleep for that general anesthesia. I would normally lift the skin up as an external approach rhinoplasty to address this, or if it's endonasal, I would sneak in through the nostril and make all the cuts on the inside of the nose. Once you achieve the shape that you want of the dorsum, when the skin is laid back, you will have a smoother profile. So I'm gonna show an example here uh, of me in the OR doing both an osteotome 
bump reduction followed by rasping to smooth out the contours. One thing to know, and I say this in all of my rhinoplasty consults, is if you take a bump down off the nasal bones here, you're gonna create what we call an open roof or a depression. And if you don't close that, the skin here will sink in and you'll get this kind of shadowy inverted V, uh, classic rhinoplasty uh, look. And to avoid that, you have to do osteotomies. So you do have to cut the bones on the sides here and here to push these bones back together. Picture a roof, the top gets cut off and you have to bring the sides back together. So that's what makes up a bump. That's how we take it down. You can watch the video and see what it looks like in the operating room. If you have any other questions about rhinoplasty or rhinoplasty anatomy, send them our way and everybody have a great week. Bye-bye.